Hey guys, Cronus Falls here, and today I am bringing you my first video on Valorant, and it is going to be a beginner's guide on all the stuff I've learned starting this game and what you need to know in order to progress. So this is not going to make you the expert Valorant player, but it is going to give you all the tools you need to succeed, and then you can build upon that with your own skill in order to become great. So let's go ahead and get started on the first thing that's very important in this game, which is aim. Let's go ahead and practice here. So one very important thing to know about, aim, about Valorant and aiming is that it is very much like Counter-Strike Global Offense, or CSGO, which means that you have to stop to shoot. Now you see how my reticle is expanding as I move side to side? That means that my aim is less accurate as I'm moving, but as I stand still, it goes ahead and stops, and I can get an accurate shot. But if I move, I'm not getting these headshots. Like, let's show it on the wall here for maximum effect. Look at that spray. Whereas if I stand still, boom. It's very much concise. So that is a very important thing to know as you come into the game. It's going to help you a lot to make sure that you are able to hit your shots. Now there is a technique in this called counter strafing that is not extremely important to use, especially as you start off in the game. But basically the idea is as you're moving, you hit the opposite direction in order to stop instantly. Now this was a big deal in CSGO, but in Valorant you will stop pretty quickly. Still, if you wanna to come to a dead stop immediately, if you are moving left, holding A, you just hit D, boom, instant stop. There you go, you hit your shot and uh, it is a little bit more of an advanced technique, something that is a little more difficult to get used to if you haven't played CSGO before, but it will help you out to move in short bursts because you can just hold A, stop, shoot, so... See, basically you get your accurate shots, you stop instantly, and uh, yeah, it's not gonna mess you up. So uh, another thing to mention is as you fire in this game, there's going to be some spray. As you can see, it's not that significant with the pistol, but if I go ahead and switch to something like the Phantom here, you'll see as I hold, boom, it's going all over the place. There's also a spray pattern to it, as you can see, but that is nowhere near where I originally had my shot. So if we're going to come closer to the wall here, you can see it in action on a smaller scale. And it's going to come up here, go to the left, go to the right. And so there is some randomness to this pattern, but for the most part, it's going to end up looking like that. So you can learn these patterns and use them to get the proper shots on your opponents. But especially when starting out, the easier thing that you're gonna be able to do is burst shots. So either a single shot to the head or a couple shots to make sure you get them. You don't want to just spray and pray because then you may end up going all around them like this. So uh, keep that in mind as you're going through. You definitely want to make sure that you are stopping getting your accurate shots and then uh, going on with that. Now I am definitely not an expert in this game and this is something that I definitely still have issues with. I'm much more used to running and gunning, never was big on CSGO, but uh, you will really see the difference as you go through and use this burst method rather than doing the spray and pray. But uh, finally, there's one more thing that is very important, and I'm going to go ahead and cut to some in-game footage for this. And that is going to be to pre-aim your shot. So as you can see here, I'm using an operator sniper rifle. I can hear footsteps coming up behind me, so I pre-aim my shot, and boom, kill. One shot, one kill, and that's the idea of pre-aiming. You want to make sure that you have an idea where your opponent might be, so that as you turn the corner, you can just pull the trigger and watch him die. Now I'm no pro at this, so you'll see here I'm going to miss a couple shots, but still I have an idea where my opponents may be coming from. Now the in-game audio didn't record for some reason, so you can't hear the footsteps that I do, but I know someone's up above and I know someone's coming to the side of me on the left. So I'm moving my shot back and forth, getting ready for whoever might pop out, miss that one, get that shot, and now I know someone's coming from the left, so boom, pre-aim, take her down. This is also very important with the regular rifles. You gotta get your headshots ready with these. So you know, you keep it at head height, you wait for your opponent to come around. And now I know that there's probably still someone else out there. So I prepare myself, I say, okay, I'm gonna keep this around head height. 
I know someone might be waiting for me around this corner, so I come out and boom, he is dead. Just a slight flick of the wrist and we get the headshot. So now we're going to move on to positioning and basically the idea here is you need to make sure that you have the optimal position in order to take out your opponents. So this falls very much in line with your utility and that is what we will be covering next. But as you'll see here, basically you need to make sure you get a shot on your opponent without leaving them the opportunity to hit you. So you need to be, make sure, you need to be making sure to get your utility out there, blocking lines of sight, pre-aiming, it all flows together here. But as you can see, I took up a position where I knew where my opponent would be coming from. I made sure to place myself in an area where the opponents could not hit me and then wait for the trap to wear off, come in, and once again place myself somewhere where I know I won't be hit and come in and place the spike. And now I can go ahead and move into a more defensible position and make sure that the opponents can't move in on us. So that's what positioning is really about. It's about basically setting yourself up optimally. So as we can see here, all of my team's pushing here, so I decided to protect this from a flank. So I'm gonna come back here. Once again, I'm going to pre-aim around this corner and boom, take that guy out. Now my team can push up without getting uh, killed from behind. So now we can see here, my teammate has her ult down. We need to plant the spike, so I go ahead and block off line of sight, jump into here where I know my opponent can't see me. As I'm planting though, she does manage to get one shot on me because she knows where I'm gonna plant. So I back up out of that. Now I know that her sight is blocked. I can come in and finish her off. And that is really what positioning is all about. If I had stayed in that from the beginning, she would have walked in and killed me on the spot. But since I backed out, she could not see me and it worked out perfectly. So here we're on defense now. And I haven't gone in this position all game, so they're not going to be expecting it. I missed that first jump, unfortunately. But if I had been coming here before, I definitely would not come back. You need to make sure that you're mixing it up so your opponents don't just know where you're going to be every time. But they're going to be expecting us on the right since they don't see us forward. They're not expecting on the left here, and I can hear them coming. So I'm just waiting for someone to come walking out, watching Heaven as well. But she comes out, boom, take her down, and then relocate because the enemy now knows where I am. So here on this one, you'll see I am guarding. I'm waiting for someone to come around that corner, pre-aimed, but they plant the spike at A, so I need to move on. So I'm gonna come out here, and I'm gonna use a lot of my utility to make sure that I can get there without getting killed. So you'll see here, I'm going to go ahead and block the line of sight there, move up, and continue to go. Here I'm going to come in as well. I'm going to check first around the corner to see if there's any enemies. Sight lines are blocked. I see one there. I'm going to go ahead and throw down some blocking of sight, jump in, and I can find my opponent right here. Unfortunately, I have to go for the spike here, so I do get killed, but that's how it goes. Alrighty, so now let's talk about utility. Every character has different utility, and as you can see here, I am playing as Jet, which means that I have smoke bombs, I can jump up in the air with Q, and I can dash forward with E, as well as having an ultimate that will allow me to pull out throwing knives and uh, kill my opponents. They recharge, and uh, if I kill someone, that is. I can also throw all of them at someone to kill them instantly as long as I hit. And so that is Jet's utility, but all of the different characters have different stuff. For instance, Phoenix can flash people around corners. Uh, there are healers like Jade, and so on and so forth. So uh, the important thing to know about utility is you need to be using it. As you go through the game, you're going to want to use it as much as you can. You don't want to be going into new rounds with all of your utility left over because that means you did not get your value out of it. So uh, make sure that as you buy your utility, you're using it up, you're making tactical advantages for your team because that is what it's for, and then you're following up with your shots in order to finish people off. So that's gonna be it for utility. Let's go ahead and move on to the economy. So in the first and middle round of each game, basically you do what is called a pistol round, which means that everybody is going to buy a ghost and fill up on their utility. Alternately, you can go ahead and buy light armor and fill up on utility instead if you're not as sure about your aim. But basically the idea here is to save up for the next round. You want to get down to zero and then assume you're going to win so that you can build up after that round. 
So we'll see here as we go into the next round. We won, but I died, so I do not have quite enough for a full build. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for a partial build. I'm going to upgrade my weapon. I'm going to upgrade my armor. And therefore, while I'm not at a full build yet, I still have some utility to bring. I have a good weapon and we can go ahead and push in there and build up our economy even more by winning this round. Typically, whoever wins the first round is going to win the second round as well because their economy is better. And then as you continue to win, you can go ahead and build up to a full build like this here. But now let's say that you've started to lose, right? You don't have enough for a full build, but you see your teammates are coming in with partial builds like this or even a full build like down here. So you want to make sure you're buying as a team. Even though I can't get heavy armor, I want to make sure that I can support my team as much as possible. We're going to bring our economy down a little bit, and if we do still lose this round, we can just do an econ round next turn to recover, and we'll be alright, but if we win, the upside is big. So make sure to buy with your team. Now finally, let's talk about a full buy. So, as you saw there, at 4800. That means I can come in here, I can buy a full weapon even though I had nothing, full armor and upgrade all my utility. That is where the game really shines. A full buy is where you get to see your full potential as a team. And that is basically it for the economy. You're trying to save up to get as many full buy rounds as possible so that your team can come in there as strong as can be all together, push the point and win the objective, whether that's killing the enemy team or planting the spike. So the last very important thing you need to know as a beginner is that your footsteps as you run make sound. So you are default running in this game, so let's listen to this real quick. Doesn't sound that loud, but it is. Basically, uh, I have noticed this a lot playing against people is they don't understand that if you hold shift to walk, you do not make any footstep sounds and you can sneak up on opponents. This is very effective, whether you're on defense or offense, to make sure that your opponents do not know where you're coming from. As you saw in some of those clips, I knew exactly where an enemy was going to be coming from because I could hear their footsteps, and so I just waited around the corner, pre-aimed, and got my shot off. They had no chance to react to it. So uh, that is probably the biggest tip, honestly, is to walk. Uh, you also have a little bit better aim walking than you do if you are sprinting so let's look at that again as we're walking we're going to come over here now so that we don't see those bullet holes so I'm going to hold shift and walk you can see that's fairly accurate not completely but fairly accurate but if I run they're all over the place so this is especially exacerbated when you're not using a pistol let's get the vandal back out so we're walking pretty decent grouping now let's run all over the place. So keep that in mind. You do have better aim when walking. You can see how big the reticle goes when I'm sprinting around, but if I'm walking around, it does not get nearly that big. You have a much tighter aim circle. So if you do need to be moving while shooting in order to not die, make sure you are at least walking or crouching. Crouching will give you a pretty decent shot too. Uh, so just keep those things in mind. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already. I hope you're interested in giving Valorant a try. If you haven't yet, it's really fun. And if you're into first-person shooters, especially Counter-Strike Global Offensive, then you're really going to enjoy this game. So thanks for watching. I'm also going to be streaming this tomorrow, uh, June 28th at 12 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time at twitch.tv slash Falls. So if you're interested, I hope to see you there. All right, that's it for today. Thanks.